Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Well, happy Valentine's Day, everyone, and welcome to Real Film Nerds Podcast, episode number 360. But do you know what is way more important than Valentine's Day today, Michael? I think I do. I think this is our anniversary cuz cuz you were uh you were feeling love sick and you wanted to love something. So this is what you love, right, Matt? Well, that and you know, Shaniqua, but that's a, another story. Okay. That's yeah. my that's my blow up doll. Oh, oh, okay. You named her. Well, Mike, don't you name things you love? Oh, that's like your children. Yes. Yes, that's that's true. That's Wait. true. I have the same love for Shaniqua. It's, no, it's not the same love. <laughs> <laughs> nope. All right. Stop and rewinding. Not okay. saying that. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So, so Matt, how many how many years have we n- done this? Well, I was going to ask you that because you should know. Dude, I don't know. Is it like six? Yes. This is the the start of year six, I believe. So then it would be the start of year seven. But yes, twenty eighteen, Mike is when the Real Film Nerds podcast started. Wow. Wow. 2018. But I wasn't on the first two. I was not on the first two. No. And I wasn't on at least... I'm trying to think how many... I think maybe two? Two or three that you did by yourself. And then I did like one or two by myself. Yeah, that's true. You did do a few by yourself, sure. I did at least one, dude. I don't know if more, eh, maybe more. I don't, I don't know, dude. It's I been 360 remember. episodes. Yeah, I don't remember. I just know when, I think when we were doing them by ourselves when was when we were at that time period where we were doing two a week, and that was difficult. Uh, and now, so many years later, we have a very difficult time doing one a week. Hence the reason why we're recording literally minutes before actual Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I expanded my family a little bit. I went from zero to two. Uh, That has taken up a lot of time, I think. Uh, Also, the pandemic ended, so we kind of got more of our lives going again, right? Mine never stopped. Oh, yeah, that's true. You, you're unstoppable. I was an essential worker, Mike. Yes, yes, you were. So I still was out running around, taking photographs, doing social media and marketing and real estating. But anyways, Mike, enough of the COVID stuff. So episode number 360, we are talking about a Best Picture nominee, uh, a Netflix original, uh, Mike, I will just let you go ahead and do it. Why don't you break down Maestro? Okay, Matt. So Maestro was uh, directed by Bradley Cooper, written by Bradley Cooper and Josh Singer. And it's starring Bradley Cooper, Carrie Mulligan, Matt Bomer, and Vinicio Atmada. And this... Love Story chronicles the lifelong relationship of conductor, composer Leonard Bernstein and his actress and actress Felicia Montalegro Cohen Bernstein. Montal, I said that right? Yeah, I think so. Dude, he said it like so slow and multiple times in the film and you you're questioning yourself or did you sleep through that part? No, I'm just, you know, I I no, I didn't sleep through it, dude. This movie was fascinating to me. Were you bored by this movie? Uh, no, not really. I, I I have my thoughts on it, which we'll get to in a minute. But uh, oh, one thing I was just thinking about. You know, if you want to fix that family problem, uh, don't they still have that policy where you can drop drop the kids off at the fire station and no questions asked? I believe they do. Yes. Um, I think it's. I don't. I don't know. I, the kids might have grown past that period. There's an age limit? There's a time limit on this? I I feel like there is. I mean, it's not Walmart. You can't just return them. Well, that's not really returning them unless, you know, your wife hooked up with a firefighter, and then that's a whole other story, Mike. But Okay. All right. All right. 
<laughs> okay, all right. Before we get going with our review of Maestro, Mike, it's been a little while, but in honor of our anniversary, we have a new giveaway. Oh, man, it has been a little while. All right, what do we got? So, Mike, this week, I sent you the trailer. I believe this is a direct-to-video or direct-to-home or direct-to-streaming or whatever they want to call it film. It is called Air Force One Down. So not the Harrison Ford film, Air Force One Down. Mike, I watched the trailer for it. You watched the trailer for it. What do you think? Is this going to be a good one? Is this going to be fun? It looks fun to me. Uh, It is an action movie, and it kind of looks like a female-type John Wick character, and I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I thought it looked pretty entertaining. Not a super huge, well-known cast, but there were a handful of faces that I did recognize in the trailer. But uh, so, Mike, um, what should our incredible listeners do to be entered into our contest to win? I think it's a digital copy. I don't think it's a digital rental. I'm not sure. I didn't get the details on it yet. But uh, I think it's a digital copy of Air Force One Down. So what should our listeners do? Hmm, that's a great question, Matt. Should we have them... Let's just have them tell us uh, their favorite president-related action movie. Does it have to be a movie or can it be a TV show? Because you know there's that giant TV show centered around the presidency. Well, let, let's do a movie, Matt. We're a movie podcast. Let's just say, uh, you know, there there's tons of movies that involve the president. So th- this, this should be fun. This should be an interesting uh, category for people to throw throw something down. Okay, so now, how long does the president have to be in said film? Oh, uh, not long at all, Matt. Does it, like, what, do you have something in mind, Matt? Spaceballs, of course. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, what were you thinking? I, I don't know, but that's awesome. <laughs> I feel like you were going somewhere, and, and you went there. So there I, we I go. did. I did. I kicked that door wide open, Mike. But anyways, all right, well, here we go. Let me give you guys the business. But if you want to be entered into our contest, go ahead and email Mike. It's Mike at realfilmnerds.com and give him your answer. We will put you in our drawing. We will draw out through a random number generator like we always do and send you the code. And you can watch this, what looks to be really fun, good film. It's definitely different than Air Force One because um, in the trailer, not to spoil it, it's in the trailer, but clearly only a portion of the film is actually in the plane. There's a lot of it that takes place in a, looks like a prison, jail cell, underground bunker somewhere, and they got to escape, and that looked pretty cool. It did look pretty cool. I, I thought it was going to be mostly in the plane, but uh, no, I, I think that's just kind of where it starts. Well, I thought so, too, because of the title, you know, Air Force One but it says down. So there you go. There you go. All right, here we go. Here is the business. So email Mike. On her first assignment aboard Air Force One, a rookie Secret Service agent faces the ultimate test when terrorists hijack the plane and target the president, leading her into a relentless battle that could change the course of history. Air Force One Down is the latest heart-pounding action thriller to buy on Vudu now. It is rated R, and it is from Republic Pictures. All right, get your emails in, mike at realfilmnerds.com, and tell him congratulations on six years of our friendship. Oh, yes, yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, what movie that you... uh uh like that has uh, the president in it somehow so it doesn't have to be a long time just a little bit you know whatever just just the tip yeah yeah as 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 she said yeah that's what she said yep perfect mike perfect or that's what he said he, he yeah. said uh, yeah i don't know uh they both could be saying it depends uh you know who's drunker yeah Anyways, all right, Mike, I'm going to let you kick open the door and chat about Maestro because I have talked about it. This is now my third time, so I will let you start, and then uh, I will come in. 
All right, Matt, I was pretty blown away by this movie. It is really, really good. One of my bigger questions that I am wondering about, Matt, and maybe we'll, we'll answer that later, is I'm wondering what inspired Bradley Cooper to make this, but uh, I'm glad he did because, wow, what what an amazing movie and just fantastic acting and actually just fantastic a lot of things. Matt, the makeup, the makeup for the the, the older parts was just amazing, dude. I was like, it's hard to believe that's Bradley Cooper. All right, dude, it's going to be a podcast. Uh-oh, uh-oh. What do we got here? What do we got? I didn't hate this movie. I thought the movie was excellent all the way around, except for one thing. And what do you think that thing is, Mike? Uh, I'm not sure, dude. The story. I really just thought the story was extremely lackluster. I wanted to know more about Leonard Bernstein, how he came to prominence, how he got so big, his schooling, his process, everything. I'm fine with learning about his his relationships with his wife and him, you know, sleeping around behind her back with men and doing all that stuff. But I wanted to see more about the man and his process and what he did to bring him into what he is. It's not Maestro's love story. It's Maestro. So it should have been about the man total. And it just, the story just didn't hit for me. But everything else, incredible. Um, Bradley Cooper's acting, amazing. Makeup is the best. If they don't win an Academy Award for makeup, I'm ashamed. Um, uh, what's her, um, I'm forgetting her name, uh, his uh, Carrie Mulligan. Yeah, uh, absolutely incredible. She, in my opinion, Bradley Cooper did very good, but she acted circles around Bradley Cooper. He, she was just absolutely amazing in this film. Um, cinematography out of this world. Uh, the color palette, very good. Um, the way everything was shot, just this movie is the complete package for me minus the story and you know how much weight we put on the story and at least i do and so i just it was okay i just wanted more i wanted to know more about it i thought it was kind of long and drawn out in parts here and there i mean i liked a lot of how it was shot uh, you know the intro for instance when he goes right in and starts um uh uh performing uh directing carnegie hall at 25 years old why how did he get to that point? It's so young. You know, I like how they did the transition. Like it was his apartment and he was living there and all that stuff. That was very cool. But I wanted to know more because I know some about uh, uh, Leonard Bernstein or Bernstein, but not at the level that like my mom does, for instance. Like my mom uh, grew up during his heyday and was in college during a large part of his, you know, him becoming really famous and popular and all this stuff. And she really adored this movie and liked it a lot, but she had the same thoughts too. So that's, that's the only downside I see in this film. Okay. All right. All right. Um, not nah, Matt, I could see, I could see why you want, want that. You're right. It, it does say maestro. It doesn't say maestro's love, uh, like, uh, personal life. Yeah, or love but, story. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I don't know. I I really I really liked it. Um, I liked all the different layers of the different things that are going on in his life, and and just the way that the script was, where things. I don't know. I I, I you know, uh, Mags watched this with me, um, and it. It just seemed like there's just a lot of layers and different depth to the the conversations and nuances uh, that were fascinating, fascinating to watch. Um, with they never, never in this movie did they they say that he was, um, I guess, 
Well, I mean, we're not in spoiler section, so I'm I'm not gonna I'm well, not gonna go. Okay, okay. So I had this conversation with my mom last night, which uh, I should just apologize now. Both of us were having a shit filled day yesterday, so her podcast isn't the greatest, and she kept banging her mic and making noise. So if you don't want to listen to Ma Hinshaw lose her cookies, episode number fifty. God, if you can believe that, fifty episodes with my mom. Um, I don't blame you because it's kind of a shit show, but uh, um. Great. Now I lost my train of thought of what I was talking about. Oh, well. Okay. All right. All right. It's fine. Now. <laughs> um, let's just, uh, I was going to spoil it. So I'm going to oh, move yeah, on. Spoilers. That's what I was going to say, Mike. Um, that's what I was. That's what I was going to before I went off on a tangent. Um, you can't really spoil this movie because it's real life. How do you spoil real life? You could go and sit down and read a Wikipedia article and know about all the shit in this movie, you know, so you can't really spoil it, but you want to move on because we're already uh, well past our halfway point, and I know you're exhausted because you're an old man that has children, and you should have done it 20 years ago. That's true. That's true in some ways. Yes. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> Matt, what are you drinking this fine morning, evening, afternoon? <sighs> well, Mike, thanks for asking. Uh, you know me, I'm always living the high life, so I'm having another high life. Nice. I Well, I guess I'm always living the, the, the nomad life, Matt. I'm some hoppy nomad. How can you live the nomad life when you never leave your house? Uh, let's see. Oh, maybe it's the nomad, her, wait, hermit, her, uh, what? No, hermit what is correct. Be, yeah. Her, yeah, hermit. All right, yeah. so maybe I'm living the hermit life. Yeah, yeah. Because I was gonna say, when was the last time you saw the sun? What's that? Exactly. Let me guess. Uh, uh, it was Bush Junior was president. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bush Junior. That's funny. <laughs> All right, Mike. So, speaking about juniors, what is this week's probably just regrettable dad joke i got dad jokes i don't think they understand though gotta think i'm funny other people never laugh though dad jokes all right matt this is very topical i've been trying to keep it on the topical so why did the conductor get fired from the orchestra he farted he was out of tune with his staff okay all right <laughs> not, that's not a good dad joke it really is not don't worry, your birthday's around the corner. You will be getting a new book. You will have more jokes to choose from, Mike. That's your birthday present. I think I told you that a couple weeks ago, though. Yeah, yeah, you did. Okay, all right, all right. So that, hey, you know, I like the topical ones, man. No, no, I like that you're you're getting them themed. You know, one thing we need to discuss is if we're going to keep doing what are you drinking, because I don't know if anybody really cares or pays attention if we say we're drinking the same beers every week, but... Okay. Well, I'll try and toss it up, man. I'll, tr I'll I'll try and be more adventurous in my life. Well, that means you're going to have to go outside. I am going to have to go outside. Yeah, I don't know if that's possible, Mike. But no, I'm uh, just saying I don't I don't know if anybody even really cares or pays attention to what we're drinking. But anyways, well, I know you... number when super fan Eric does. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what really matters. Eric, please email Mike at realfilmnerds.com. And tell him if you want us to keep doing uh, what are you drinking. And uh, whatever you say is what we will do. Sound good? <laughs> All right. Sounds good. We're giving him way too much power and control. <laughs> okay, Mike. So uh, this is a very difficult one. I know it took you all of 0 0.001 of a second to figure out this question. But, Mike, how does Maestro relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? All right, Matt. So, uh, of course, this is um, Bradley Cooper, who is voices the character of Rocket in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, 2, and 3, and Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, Thor Love and Thunder. You know, he's, he's, he's featured. So, this one was not hard, which... Which is great, because I'm sure the next Oscar one will be. 
Well, but you don't know what we're doing next week. I have no idea, but I'm I'm just I'm just just pontificating. I think it'll be fairly simple, but Mike, we will find out later in said podcast when I announce what film we're going to watch next week. Okay, sounds good, dude. No, you might have to, you know, plan a date. I'll put it that way. Oh, interesting. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. So now we can spoil it. Mike, ready, set, uh, whatever you were going to spoil earlier, go. Unless you forgot like me. Isn't that the messed up part? Like, yes, I'm a little bit older than you, but not that much. And my memory is going way worse than yours already. And you're the one with kids? Yeah, that's not good, dude. It's not good. Do you want to know the truth? I mean, I, I don't know if I said it on the podcast or not. I haven't discussed it with my doctor, but since I got COVID for the first time in November, like... My memory has really been kind of shit. Uh oh, dude, you got the long COVID. Yeah, I think I do. At least mentally, I do. Because yeah, I'll I'll lose track of what I'm thinking and I will forget stuff. Now, not like long term stuff, but short term stuff. So hopefully, it's just for the short term. But I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, spoilers. Oh, I uh, have dementia at the age of forty two. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh well. Uh... On on that, uh, no, the the uh, thing I was going to spoil, Matt, was uh, Leonard Bernstein is gay or bisexual, I guess, right? But never in the movie do they ever say it. Yeah, they no don't one, openly say it. They just imply it. No one ever says anything anywhere. Yeah, they, they imply it, especially when, you know... He's leaving his naked lover at the beginning of the film, and it's a man, of course. But see, I I don't know if you would call that bisexual because I he never went after like other women though, like he only went after dudes when he was married. So, well, maybe he was just gay, but he felt obligated to have kids. I don't know, man. Like, but but I feel like some of it has to do with the times, right? That's definitely like, something during those times for sure. I mean, the fifties, sixties. 70s yeah for sure definitely like the the nuanced well it was like what the 40s because they were talking about like bombing right like like world war ii like was that like 50s when 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 was he 25 oh dude that's a very good question uh dang it mike see i want to look it up but i don't have um they met in 46 so so that would have been right after world war ii Okay, so that makes sense because they were talking about bombing stuff, like, in the very beginning. Um, but so that was very oh, interesting. And I fucked this. Well, no, maybe that is the same. Sorry, I'm just reading some stuff. The New York Philharmonic they play at Carnegie Hall, right? So I was right. Never mind. I was questioning okay. myself. Okay. Um. So the uh. That that's one of the kind of layers of this, but like, there's also the whole uh, anti-Semitism uh, stuff that happens. You know, the Jewish, which I still don't understand, Matt. I almost, I think I need someone to sit down and explain to me. I don't understand why the Jews are always persecuted. Dude, that understand. is an insanely hot but to- button topic right now that my mom and my nephew get into almost on a nightly battle. Because you know all the stuff that's going on in the Middle East, so yeah. I'm I'm not going to touch that one with a two thousand foot pole. Okay, all right, but I you know I I guess I'm pleading ignorance. I don't understand what the why they're always persecuted, but I mean they are. I, I honestly I have no clue because uh, I mean sure being a Jew is a race, but it's also a religion. And so I don't, I don't understand because I mean, you can be not of Jewish descent, but still be a Jew because it's a religion. That's true. So it's very, very fucking strange to me, dude. But basically this is how I think of it. If you are different in any way, shape or form, it's just another reason to be fucking persecuted. I know that's very basic, but just look at it historically even some of oh fuck i don't want to go off on this too much because it's a pretty dark topic but a lot of like the the civil wars and stuff in africa and things i mean a lot of that's religion based or where they were what tribe they're from or 
I mean, it's just an excuse to, you know, persecute people, basically. My yeah. opinion. Okay. Um, well, I guess we we can leave that uh, how it is, but um, yeah, it's a huge topic. We'll just put it that that, and it's wrong. How's that? Yeah. There. Um. The but uh, I don't know. Like I really liked the approach to the script in this, where it was just like, especially in the beginning, the way that they talked and like they were so like um excited and young and then as this movie progresses they become like uh you know i guess th- their their manner of speaking changes and stuff and i i thought that was cool um i i don't know the like i said earlier matt the makeup gosh the makeup was so good oh very um, very good yeah at, there was this one shot matt i really liked in this movie and it was where bradley uh, or, or Leonard Bernstein and and his uh, wife are talking, and he's talking about trying to bring uh, a friend over, or have a friend stay or something. It's it's I think one of his lovers or whatever. Of course, yeah. And it's it's very like subtle and stuff, but the 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 shot is very far away, and I I felt like it was trying to imply that their relationship has has grown like apart. And like I, I don't know, it was really cool. Are you talking you know about what I'm the, talking about? Yeah, are you talking in about their, the scene where they're at their um house in uh it's probably in um oh where that rich place is outside of New York. Uh yeah, Montauk or or, or um Yeah. Uh the Hamptons. Hamptons, there you go. Probably out somewhere like that. Um because it's they're sitting outside at a pool. And it's really, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. And that's that's one of those feats of cinematography that was just absolutely incredible. I, I really liked it. I thought it was very, very good. Like, that was a really, like, memorable shot to me, dude. I was just like, wow. Oh, um, there's a there's hundred memorable shots in here because, and, and here's the thing, I, I guess I could touch it on touch on it a little bit, but the thing that floors me the most is that this is Bradley Cooper's second film. Both of the films that he has directed, he has been nominated for Best Picture. Wow. That's a fucking statement. Now, do I think this one should win Best Picture? No, I don't. I have my pick. I haven't seen all of them yet, but I already have my pick on what I want to see win. But, dude, he needs to win Best Picture here in his lifetime, in my opinion, if he keeps this up. I mean, just absolutely incredible. Well, so... The, here's another layer of this film, Matt. Like our our main character, uh, Leonard Bernstein or Bernstein, uh, was um, he was like a conductor, but he was also a composer. Correct. And he also was a teacher, and he's also Correct. like all these things. In some ways, do you think this is, I don't know, reflective of Bradley Cooper? Because Bradley Cooper is a, uh actor he's a director he produced this he um he also wrote he it. wrote this yeah um like maybe I, I don't know i mean you're trying to say like like um he's like a renaissance man in a way but not but yeah but a renaissance I mean, man is more like doing like a bunch of different things that aren't related these are all things that are related like including a leonard bernstein or bernstein um you know, all of his stuff was music related. All of Bradley Cooper's is film related. Yeah. So, well, maybe yeah, I'm trying to tie it together like that, I guess. Kind of, I guess. But I mean, he's still very youthful in his career in doing directing and writing. Yeah. No, no, he is. But I, I kind of think he's going towards that path of uh, that, that um, kind of like a Clint Eastwood. Yeah. But I don't. Where, does Clint Eastwood write his stuff? Uh, he writes some of it, I think. Yeah, he like, probably he has. Yeah, uh, I think he's written some of it, but like he directs and stars in a lot of the movies. Man, he's still got another movie coming out. I know, I know, dude. That guy is amazing. But uh, you know, I wasn't super hot on Cry Macho, and we talked about that one. But yeah, uh, yeah. No, I think if if Bradley Cooper keeps this up, you know, I would. I think right now he should win. Uh, uh, um, 
Oh, I don't know, man. Cillian Murphy was pretty awesome in uh, Oppenheimer, but uh, I I would I would not be upset if he wins a uh, Best Actor in a leading role. I I'd be okay with Bradley Cooper winning that, but uh, you know, screenwriting I don't think so. But I think you think the opposite. And Best Picture definitely not. Not for me. Not for me. Um, I do think. Um, uh, what's her face? Uh, Carrie, Carrie Mulligan. Mulligan. Yeah, I keep forgetting her name. Carrie Mulligan should win for sure. She was, she was very good, very very good. From going from being young, to loving her husband, to basically dying inside, to physically dying of cancer. I mean, dude, wow. What what a interesting. And they didn't explain that, and I think that's okay. Like it, it doesn't say that they got divorced, but I think they were separated for a while. Um, I don't know if they were ever separated, but um, they were. You know, she passed away when they were still married. Yeah, and he did consider her the love of his life. Um, you know. So, uh, at, you know, this is where I'd like you know I'm leading to talk about it next. But you remember the the huge scene in the cathedral? Oh, dude. Yeah. One of the best scenes I have I mean, God, that was an absolutely incredible scene. But that was an awesome First scene, thing dude. he does, even they're having their riffs and everything, goes up and gives her a huge kiss and hug and stuff. Because sexually he might have been exploring with not exploring, but with men and all that, but truly like souls, like you could tell, like she was his soulmate. Yeah. Well I, I... It was interesting. Uh, there's a scene where he's talking to his his uh, daughter, his grown up daughter, and he was talking about how people are jealous of him and that she might have heard some rumors or whatever. And and that's one of those things where they're not talking about him, his uh, sexuality. Him, yeah, yeah, sexuality stuff. But he's like, yeah, sometimes people are jealous of whatever it is that I do. And like he doesn't even seem to. It's very interesting how he approached his uh, being, I guess. Like his, like I don't think he saw himself as a composer or as a. a I, I I don't know. Like he just he did what he really loved to do. I don't know. Like it was inter- It was very interesting. He was very. Uh, hmm. Well. I don't know. Mike, he had an extreme passion for music in all aspects. Yeah. Period. Like, that's unwavering. You can see that uh, at the end of the film when they have the real life clips of Leonard Bernstein and he's directing. You can see he's just extremely passionate for that music. And, you know, he loved teaching it, which I thought was sad that they didn't show enough of him teaching it. Um, cause he was, uh, he was a te- he taught almost as much as he directed, you know, he taught a lot and there's hardly any in there. The thing like you talked about earlier that he didn't do a lot of though was composing. He didn't do a ton of composing cause it was a completely different mindset. Yeah. Well, I mean the teaching, you're right. They didn't do a lot of it, but towards the, at the end there, they did, um, they did have him like doing a teaching, yeah. uh, thing yeah and that was really cool because you saw that he was like he was trying to help people learn how to do it but he was also i don't know he's still so passionate he's like ah that wasn't good enough like like in it was interesting it was very interesting well and one thing that my mom talked about um on her podcast is that uh he was an incredible pianist incredible and she has lots of uh, vinyl of uh, his different performances and stuff. And there was a little bit of that in here. Like they touched on it at the beginning uh, when he meets uh, Felicia um, because he's playing piano at a party and stuff. But that's kind of the only time you really see it. But my mom said he was passionate about playing piano as well. That was like his instrument. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess you're right. And in, in the very beginning when they're doing the interview or whatever, when he's old, they show him kind of playing on the keyboard keys a little yes, bit. Yes, but that's they're more talking about the composing then. But no, if you go to the fast forward to the party when he meets her, yeah, he's the one playing the piano and doing all that stuff while everybody else is singing and everything. 
And that's kind of the only yep. time you really see him playing much in the film. Yeah, and then right at the end during the one of the cancer scenes, he he plays the the um whatever the 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 bride song. Um, yes, yes, the uh um yeah, here comes the bride. Uh, yeah. 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 But uh no, I mean so now you kind of see what I'm I'm meaning. I don't I don't want to make you change your reels or anything. I hope you're not going to. But you see what I mean? There's so much more to this man's life that we're just not privy to that I really wish would have been included, you know, and dial back the love story a little bit. But hey, you know, you loved it. I thought it was a great film. Um I still don't think it's best picture. I'm happy that it was nominated just like Barbie. Like uh, I don't think Barbie is going to win best picture at all, but I was very happy that it was nominated. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Barbie will win either, but yeah, no, it, it, it was, it was a lot of fun to watch uh, Barbie actually. I, I didn't know what they were going to do. So it was very interesting to see how they would do well, that. Well, my argument, I've talked about it on the radio a few times, uh, multiple times actually, but the cultural significance of that film and Oppenheimer and they put people back in the theaters. People had fun. They were enjoying themselves. They were getting dressed up to do it. The The cultural significance of Barbie alone deserves a nomination. A lot, you know, and a lot of the Marvel Cinematic Universe films and other action type films that I feel have done very similar things in the past never got nominated. Now, they're not going to win. That's fine. But I think the Academy nominating it recognizes the significance of the film. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. All right, Mike. Well, we can sit here and talk all day, but you need to go to bed. Uh, Cause you know, we don't get to talk much. And so we kind of go to town when we do talk our once a week, but uh, Mike, before I announce what we're going to go watch and review for next week, Mike, how many reels do you give Maestro? Uh, I'm going to give this one four and a half reels, man. I really loved it. Dude, I really thought you were going to go five. I, honestly, how you were talking about it, I thought you were doing five. It's close, dude. Real close. Well, as I keep reiterating, and you'll hear it one more time, story's important. That's the only thing I found wrong with it, and it's it's a biggie for me. Uh, so I give this a three and a half. Okay. So, but it's a great film. Watch it. It's on Netflix. If you get a chance to see it in the theaters, go see it in the theaters. I know they're doing it here. They have all the Best Picture nominees coming out in the theaters uh, February 23rd, I believe, here. Yeah, I believe it's February 23rd until like March 10th or something at Harkins, which is awesome. And it's five bucks to go see them, I believe, each one. Yeah, something uh, like they that. have like they have uh, some of the theater chains in my neck of the woods have. I think Cinemark has like a thing where you can buy like a pass to go watch all the best pictures, and it's cheap. It's like it's like five bucks a movie or something. And yeah. then, um, but they're the other ones are doing a thing where they're they're showing some of the movies at least like on the weekends. I think uh, they have like a showtime or two for like all the movies. Like so, they I don't know how they're swinging that with the but the screens, but they're 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 trying to work it in. So there's definitely kind of out there. I really need to get a sponsorship from Harkins. How much I talk about Harkins on here and on the freaking radio, but yeah, Harkins is doing uh same thing. Forty bucks, you can see all the best pictures. Um, they give you a pass, and I think you just go get it punched or something. But uh, yeah, they probably like mark it off yeah, or punch yeah. it. Yeah, or like. Me and you, I've now seen half of the Best Picture nominees, which is better. I'm up to five. At one point, I was at three, which I was astonished. But I'm up to five now. Um, I got five more to go. Uh, I don't know how many of them I'm going to see in the theaters. Uh, I might end up purchasing some for us to review here in the near future. We'll see how that goes. But not for next week, Mike. We're going to the theaters, buddy. Yeah, what are we going to go see, man? Mike, we're going to go watch... Bob Marley, One Love. Oh, yeah, dude. That looks great, dude. It looks I'm really excited good. About it. My mom's worried about it. She thinks it's going to be more like Maestro or something and not really about Bob Marley the man. And I'm like, I think it's going to be about Bob Marley. I think it's going to be really, really good. My mom's afraid it's going to be too political and too, you know, that stuff. I'm like, no, I think it's going to be about Bob and his music. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm really hoping it's going to be. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I've seen that trailer like six hundred times, so uh, I'm sold. Yeah, let's let's go watch. Yeah, it. I am too. And it comes out on Valentine's Day, which is today or tomorrow, if you're you know paying attention to when we record. <laughs> Uh, but in celebration of our uh, six-year anniversary, Bob Marley, One Love, comes out today. And it's One Love with the Real Film Nerds. <laughs> yes. But that's why I was one saying. One Love Mike, from the Nerds. You, you might have to hire someone to uh, watch the chi- the children's, the chil- childos is what I almost said, but the, the, the children's, so that you and uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, mysterious mike talent can go watch this in the theater together i mean it is one love mike you're right you're right okay all right well we'll see if we can swing that man th- we'll see I, if we can swing i think it. you need to do it you need to do it so all right well uh i have jabbed on long enough more than long enough mike uh do your thing all right well uh make sure to uh throw me your uh favorite presidential movie uh title and get entered into our giveaway for uh air force one down and uh thanks for listening everybody uh make sure you follow us on the socials instagram twitter and facebook all right bye here's to another six years Woo! Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now go out and catch a movie. Welcome everyone to Ma Hinshaw Loses Her Cookies. Episode 50. Maestro. Good evening, Matt. How are you doing? Are miserable. You How are you, Mom? In? Yeah, I'm miserable too. Hey, I loved this movie. Uh, I thought it was really good. Not earth-shaking, but I thought it was a, a very good movie. And um, it kept your attention. It was not all of uh, Bernstein's life. I kind of missed having the um, his education because it kind of starts out with him going to Carnegie Hall when he's 25, which was fantastic. I mean, he was brilliant. But I would have liked to have known what schools he went to or, you know, how he got to that point. But other than that, I thought the movie was very interesting and very good. And uh, did you enjoy it, Matt? So... Why don't you tell people what Maestro was about? It was about Leonard Bernstein's uh, life, basically, from the time he was 25. And his marriage and his relationships. And it covered quite a bit of his work. Not enough, in my estimation, I would have liked to have heard more He was quite a good pianist, and I actually had vinyls of his piano playing, but it it did cover uh, several works that he did with orchestra and choir at Carnegie Hall. Fantastic job. And, of course, it, it covered the relationship between him and Felicia, his wife, and uh, the difficulties that went on with that marriage. I think absolutely that uh, Bradley Cooper was fantastic because I have actually in the past watched Leonard Bernstein on TV and I think Bradley nailed his 
speech, his accent, nailed it to a T. He was very good. And Carrie uh, Mulligan, I think her name is, played Felicia, his wife, and she did a very good job. Did you think she was good? Uh, She acted circles around Bradley Cooper, yes. Wow. Well, uh, I saw started to watch one um, video. They were talking about the movie, and they had her, the daughter, on, and she really felt that uh, Carrie was just spot on um, acting, being her mother. She said she was very pleased with her work. So, uh, I mean, that's pretty good to know that her daughter was um, on the movie, too, to make sure, I don't know, that things were fine, you know. And and it was uh, very interesting, the shots of Carnegie Hall. Um, I enjoyed it. I think anyone who watch would watch it at home would enjoy it. And uh, did you like it? It was fine. Not earth shaking though, like, like the. Well, a lot of people. It was nominated, right? Wasn't it for Academy Award? I think Bradley probably was nominated. I'm not sure. I didn't look it up. <laughs> yes, it is nominated for seven Academy Awards. That many? That is, that is why we are talking about it, because it is nominated for Best Picture. And as I have said oh. on this podcast and other podcasts many times over, but I guess you don't listen to them, that uh, we are going to try and watch all of the Best Picture nominees. This is a Best Picture nominee. It is on Netflix, so it should be easy for my co-host on my podcast to watch but I guess it wasn't easy for him to watch either, even though he can watch it any time of day, at any moment, anywhere. Yes, that's it was wonderful that it was on Netflix because that was easy watching. You know, you can watch it when the kids went to bed or something. Uh, uh, but yeah, I highly recommend it. I enjoyed it. I There were things that... Like I say, I I wish they'd had more of his music. How how he came about writing. He wrote West Side West Side Story. I think it would have been nice to kind of see a little more of how he works. You know, creates that music and stuff. But it was more about his relationships with his wife, children. Um, uh, other people and uh you know that was more the focus i believe but anyway um that's my view of the movie and i don't want to say too much but you know that's i thought it was a good watch so anyway how are you how are you going to spoil a movie that's based on true life hmm well, I don't know, it, except that there are parts that are kind of sad, and uh, I do uh, want to caution people. There are parts that are sad, uh, and, uh, you know, but no, I don't think you could spoil it, especially when it's about a person that was very, very creative, talented. You know, fantastic there. But like I say, I I really, that's why I, well, okay. I want to give my, uh, how many cookies I gave it. I didn't give it a five. I gave it a a four because like I I felt like I missed uh, some of the, Oh, like uh, some of the relationships and some of, and it was a bit long and uh, 
I wish there were more music. In fact, that's, you know, several of us that watched it said we wish there had been a bit more of his music. Okay? It's your podcast. I'm just here for the show. Well, that's all. I'm finished. I, I, I highly recommend everyone watch it. He was a brilliant, brilliant uh, musician, uh, a writer, and I think, like I say, uh, Bradley and Carrie, very, very good performances. So anyway, that's it from Ma Hinshaw. Okay, so let's recap this whole thing. This film is not based on his life. It is based on his relationship with his wife, which is one of my complaints with the film. Uh, if you're going to call it Maestro, it should be about him and it should be about his life and everything from, I guess you would say, the beginning or at least his yeah. uh, beginnings as a musician. How's that? Um, I agree. It uh, does not dive into really much else it doesn't really go into much of about his music it doesn't really go much into about his life with his kids it's mm -hmm. mostly about his relationship with his wife or lack thereof because as you find out in the film he is a homosexual that loves men and lots of them and so he uh, uh to put it nicely basically cheats on his wife many times over uh, with other partners, specifically men. And she has a real problem with it, which is understandable, but yeah, he still loved her very passionately. That's what the film is really about. Uh, I don't think it was successful in that. I think it was successful telling the love story, I guess, but I don't think it was successful as a portrait of the man and a portrait of his work and what he did. That's my biggest complaint with the film. I thought it was just okay. It could have been leaps and bounds better, and it wasn't. Uh, everything about this film was fantastic other than the story. The acting was great. The cinematography was great. Everything was w extremely well done. And this is Bradley Cooper's second film he's ever directed. Both films he has directed, both have been nominated for Academy Awards. Both have been nominated for Best Picture. That's outstanding. Clearly, this guy knows what he's doing. I don't know if he was the one that helped write this and that's, I mean, he helped write it, but I don't know if it was mostly his vision that made it askew or if it was his co-writer, Josh, Josh Singer, but, uh, it did not, it did not work out great for me. As far as a story goes, I would have liked to have known more about the man would have liked to know more about his relationship with his family. If you're going to make a story about the man, tell us about the man. And his, you know, rise to fame. And, I mean, they didn't even have West Side Story in here, like, at all. No, 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 not him working it, not him talking about it. There's literally a sentence that says he did West Side Story, and that's it. And that's one of his biggest claims to fame in Hollywood, at least. So I was, I don't want to say disappointed, but I expected something different and better. I agree with that one. I, I do agree with that. Like I say, uh, and I actually uh, Googled his education because I wanted to know how in the world, what education he had. Yes, he was gifted, but how did he get to Carnegie Hall when he was 25? That, you know, there was none, none of that. It's just all of a sudden, oh, there he is, you know. Well, that's yeah. how the film opens, is him directing at Carnegie Hall at the age of 25. He's gets up and walks out of the bed with the, one of his um, uh, mm -hmm. relationships at the time and into Carnegie mm -hmm. Hall, which was a beautiful shot. It's really fun beautiful. and interesting how they did it. But yeah, there's just, I wanted to know more about him, not so much about his love affairs. And it was just kind of a letdown. I, I, I understand True. why everybody likes it and what it is, but I wanted something different. Uh, I think it, I don't think it was a failure as a film. I think it was a good film. I don't think it's a great film. I understand why it's nominated for an Academy Award. It's old Hollywood and everybody loves, especially the Academy old Hollywood. 
But, you know, everything is phenomenal about this except for the story. And I put the most weight on the story, which I'm sure I've talked about by now in Mm -hmm. my podcast. But I don't know because we haven't recorded it yet. So, but for me, it's always story. And this isn't the first one of the um, Best Picture nominees where I've said the story hasn't been super great. And it's one of the things that detracts. And that's what a movie is. It's a movie is. That's what a book is. That's what a video game is. It's a way to tell a story. And if the story's not very good, then I don't think it's a, a super successful film, video game, novel, article, you name it. It needs to be a good story. Do they have a category for the story kind well, of thing? Or is it yeah, is I mean, that Mom, just they have, the movie? They have you know? Academy Awards for scripts. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that one. The story could have been better. There are a lot of more directions that he could have gone, but this was his first, I think, on that. Uh, or second, second. I don't know no. if it's his first time writing. Yeah, I don't know that one. Yeah, I really don't. Uh, I have no knowledge of that, but uh Yeah. You know, uh, but anyway, that but that's my view on it. <laughs> clearly, Hollywood likes it because they gave it uh, a, a nomination for best original screenplay. <gasps> really? Oh, my goodness! Yeah, the seven Academy Awards it is nominated for is uh, makeup and hairstyling, sound, uh, movie of the year. Uh, performance by an actress in a leading role, performance by an actor in a leading role, uh, Mm. best original screenplay, and best achievement in cinematography. And I think uh, Mm. one, two, three, four, five of, six of them, probably most of them, six out of the seven, I think are warranted for a nomination, not necessarily a win. But I I don't Mm. think the best original screenplay at all. But that's me. Yeah, no, I I agree with that too. So anyway, uh, but uh, I think if you watch it, you would enjoy it. Uh, but you know, the, it, it depends who you are. My buddy Clint turned it off after twenty minutes. He said it was boring. Ah, uh, okay. So yes, it does. It does depend on who you are. I mean, I was watching it with. Um, knowledge of of music directing, which I kind of focused on some of that, and uh, you know, some of the music part of it. But if you're not, I mean, there was so much on the relationship, and like I say, not all that much on his music, and uh, I felt that was kind of left out a little bit. So anyway, that that's all I have. And if you're interested, um, my grandson liked it, but then again, he also said, "Well, they, you know, he was looking at how uh, Bernstein directed." things and I had to tell him that yeah he was a very uh, flamboyant director uh, and I I think uh, Bradley captured that one but if you're not into it you might not be very interested right well thank well, you I don't Matt. know if flamboyant is the correct terminology to use while directing anything I uh, Animated, I think, is probably the correct term. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. But yeah, anyways, because... okay. So, Mom, what movie are you going to watch next week? Uh, oh. One Love, I think it's called. Yes. Bob Marley movie. Yes. Bob Marley, One Love is the title of the film. I remembered it. Yippee. So good. It's not in the correct order. Well, no, not in the correct order. That's true. But yes, it comes out 
Wednesday on Valentine's Day, and but I'm not going until Thursday. So, what anyway. what else is Valentine's Day, Mom? Uh, I don't know. It's the six year anniversary of the Real Film Nerds podcast. <gasps> oh, congratulations! The six years. Wow, that is super. Anyway. Oh, yes, and it's 55 years of when I met my husband. Da, da, dum. Anyway, well, thank you all for listening, and I hope you uh, enjoy if you watch the movie. Okay, Matt? Are you done? Yes. Okay. Then I will take us out. Okay. Thank you very much. Once again, thanks everyone for listening to my Hinshaw Loses Her Cookies episode number 50. Uh, if you want to hear more, my Hinshaw, just, you know, tune into the radios on Friday. Uh, she talks about the movie that she talks about on the podcast, but a few days early. Uh, yeah, you can follow her on Twitter, but she doesn't post, so you probably shouldn't do that either. But uh, next week, Bob Marley, One Love, comes out Valentine's Day, so we'll see how that goes. I have high hopes for it. Ma Hinshaw does not, so we will see who is correct. Thanks again, everyone, for listening, and we will chat with you next week. Bye.